Greetings. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, bevel gauges, uh, sliding bevel gauges today, uh, because they're, I think they're an important tool to have in the shop, important measuring tool. Um, they can do a couple things. They can uh, determine the angle uh, of a part if you wanted to. Like I could, I could measure the part the angle on this part here, and then I could uh, determine that angle with using a, a protractor or actually my first choice would be this bevel setter here. This is much more accurate and much more more uh, efficient to do it. So if I were to check that angle, I could look here and I could see that we're probably around uh, 17 and a quarter degrees. So that gives me 17 and a quarter degrees where this little space here, there's no way I could ever determine 17 and a quarter degrees if the lines are just too small. So I do like using my bevel gauge in conjunction with the bevel setter. I would never be without it. I've I've had this for, for decades and I've used it hundreds of times. So it's been really useful over the years. So you can determine angles. Uh, you can also take a measurement directly off a part. I take an angle right off this part and move right to the saw and set your saw with your gauge. You don't have to do any measuring. So you could use it to set the blade angle on your table saw. You could use it to set your miter gauge. You could also use it to set your, um, uh, your miter gauge on your table saw. You could also use it to set your miter saw. So huge tool to have where it eliminates all measurement and it makes, uh, eliminates a lot of mistakes. So kind of the different types that you're going to find out there. This is a more of a traditional one. It's got a wood body. It's made by Joseph Marples out of the UK. They've been making these for a couple hundred years, but it just has that and has a blade that slides in there with a slot and a knob that locks it down. So that's why I call it sliding bevel because it slides and you can set the bevel. Um, this one has a thumb screw to lock it down. This is a Marples version as well. It's just got the uh, thumb screw here, or it's got a, just a, a locking knob here, curled knob, knurled knob. It's a little bigger, so you could use it for for larger uh, projects. Um, here's one by Shinma that is has a locking knob at the end, so that when you lock it down, you can use it both ways, and you don't have to worry about the knob interfering with your work if you're using if you're working on narrow stock. So this is a Shinwa. Comes in a couple sizes. Um, and there's a small size here. This is great. Shinma also makes these really nice smaller ones. They're made out of stainless steel. They're very sleek and they um, have a narrower, a, a little bit narrower blade. They're very cost effective. I think both of these are under 20 bucks. Really, really cheap. But stainless steel, they're really nice. There's a short one here. There's a little bit bigger one here. I use these for years. I like them a lot. They're still, and even though they're narrow, they're still wide enough where they'll stand up on their end by themselves. Um, here's one that's a kind of a knockoff of a Sterrett made by gauging. It's kind of this version kind of originated in the machine shop. It's very sleek. It's pretty nice. It's very very cost effective as well. Um, here's one that I made. Uh, Marples. We actually asked them when I saw their bevel gauges. I asked them if they'd make me just a kit. With you could either buy the blades by themselves. There's three different lengths, or you could just or you could buy the brass hardware, and you could make your own. So this is just one made out of a chunk of teak that I had laying around, and I just cut a slot in it, shaped it, drilled a hole, and I got a bevel gauge. And so this works really well. I really like it. I like I like my own tools. I like using my own tools. So this is a great way to do that. Um, oh, another use for the, the bevel gauge, besides just measuring angles and also um, transferring angles, is you can actually use it as a drill guide. So if you're doing like a weird compound angle and you need to, to drill it, that would be hard to set your table or your drill press up. You can set the angle there, and then I can just take my, my drill, either a power drill or a hand drill, and I can just line it up with the angle of my bevel. It's pretty easy to do. And then I can line it up side to side to make sure I'm in line with the blade, and I can drill. And this is a much uh, more efficient way of drilling holes um, in stools and in chairs, things like that. So um, there's there's the different types. Oh, there's one other kind that uh, Marples makes. Instead of having the knob on here, they have a version where it has a screw in here. You just tighten it with a screwdriver. So there's no knob that sticks above the surface. So you can use your bevel gauge uh, on each side. And you can flip it over and the knob won't interfere. But generally, the knob doesn't stick above three quarters of an inch. which So you can use it on three quarter material without any problem. But there's, just a, there's a screwdriver lock one that's pretty nice. So there you have it. There are your... Different types of marking gauges, some uses for them. Um, we are going to have uh, all of our marking gauges on sale at tatetools.com for the next week. So check them out.